Hello and welcome to the third rail. We have a new addition to the collection this week. I recently received this beautiful uh, Class 85 locomotive in Deutsche Bahn livery and I thought we should have a quick look at it. So let's start with a quick model overview. The model appeared in the 1983-84 catalogue on page 15. It's entirely made of metal and it's a very highly detailed model uh, which is uh, another step towards realism a path on which uh, Merklin had engaged uh, at this stage of its history. The model is equipped with telex couplings on both sides. These are couplings that allow the remote uncoupling of cars. It's got electrical lighting fitted and is also equipped for a retrofit smoke unit. Uh, my model is equipped with one of them. One of the particularities of the early series of this model is that Merklin tried its hand at a new type of packaging at the time. Uh, it was made of transparent plastic, as you can see on the picture. Uh, this didn't last long, it was uh, one of only two models to use this packaging after which it was replaced by a white cardboard packaging with a plastic inlay. So let's have a closer look at the prototype. The model represents a class 85 of locomotives. This class of locomotives was in service in the Black Forest. Yes, that's where the Gatto and the Cuckoo Clocks come from. But it's also a beautiful area in Germany. It's located in the southwest of Germany in a uh, state called the Baden-Württemberg. That's where Merklin comes from. They are based in Göppingen near Stuttgart. The area known as the Black Forest covers the entire darker green area in the southwest of the Baden-Württemberg. Our prototype used to work on a line between the town of Freiburg in Breisgau and the town of Titisee Neustadt. This line goes through a very picturesque area called the Höllental or Hell Valley and that's where the line gets its name from, the Höllentalbahn, the line of the Hell Valley. This line features the steepest inclines for a railway line in Germany. For this reason, when it was first built in the late 1800s, the line was a cog or rack railway. Here's an impression of it in the early 1900s. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at those trees and meadows. Lovely. You can see the Ravenna Bridge on the right hand side. It was later replaced by a viaduct, as you can see on the screen now, with a, a train which is more contemporary. But the area is lovely and features numerous uh, railway structures, such as tunnels or bridges. And it's a lovely area to visit, and it's also a very nice theme to model. But let's go back to the prototype. It was commissioned by the Deutsche Reichsbahn in the 1930s in order to allow some rationalization of traffic in the region. The locomotive needed to be able to use standard lines and manage the 5.5% inclines of the Ullentalbahn. The Deutsche Reichsbahn had engaged a few years before in a standardization program and uh, for this series of locomotives they reused existing components from other locomotives, for example the wheel arrangements of the BR44. 
10 units of this class were produced and entered service between 1932 and 1933 and remained in service until 1961. And here is the double 309 I received. And as you can see, there's a first issue, which is that it's in the wrong box. It's half an issue because these boxes are extremely fragile and very few survive in such a good condition. So, uh, for now, I consider this as half a success because all I need to do is find a 3308 to go in it and I'm extremely likely to find a 3308 in good shape with no box. So let's have a look at what's inside now. I shall be extremely careful uh, because the uh, flaps and the sides of these uh, boxes break extremely easily. Let's uh, pull the uh, tray out now. That's it, carefully. And here we have the uh, model in all its beauty. As the model is in the wrong box, uh, I'm expecting to see a few blemishes on it, even though things do not look that bad from that perspective. So let's have a look at the side from a bit closer. Uh, you can see all the details, all the pipework, etc. on the body. It's uh, very nicely done. The uh, wheels are in uh, very good shape. There's some uh, paint bleeds here and there, but that's sort of normal for locomotives of that era. The front is complete. The lights, the lantern are there. And the other side is also in good shape. There's a bit of dust here and there, but apart from that, nothing much to report. Maybe one or two scratches on the paint, but looking closer, yeah, there's a tiny bit of peeling off here and there, but nothing major. The cab looks good, the uh, handrails are all there, and the back of the uh, unit on the tender, we can see a few scratches just over the uh, serial uh, number. The paint must have rubbed off where people usually grab the locomotive to take it out of its tray. Let's look at the undercarriage. The telex couplings are complete, wires are still there, the wheels haven't seen much track. Well, that's good. Yes, and the other telex coupling is complete. Well, the engine's not too bad. It doesn't seem to have run that much. And all I need now for it is the right box. Let's have a quick look at coaches and cars. Fortunately, Merklin gave us some sample consists at the bottom of page 15 of the 1983 catalogue. For example, this Umbau Wagen, reference 4079 or 4080. I happen to have some of them in the collection, so no doubt we will see them feature behind this beautiful BR85 in one of the upcoming running sessions. Well, we've reached the end. Thank you uh, very much for watching. It's very much appreciated. Thank you very much also to the uh, few among you who have subscribed to the channel. It's uh, always rewarding to see that people are showing some interest uh, and it keeps me going. Thanks very much. But for now, bye and uh, until next time.